Hi, this is Scott Picard with Verde Real Estate Group with today's real estate tip. With us today is Chris George from Attorneys Title Group, LLC. Chris, how are you doing? I'm good, Scott. How about you? I'm doing fantastic. So today's topic is one that's a little tricky, and I brought Chris in today to kind of help us clarify some things. So uh, we're going to talk about ways to circumvent probate uh, in a real estate transaction. So, Chris, uh, you know, why don't we bring people up to speed and just tell them briefly what what is probate and why you know ways sure. you might want to circumvent. So, it. probate usually means that somebody who owned the property has passed away, and they didn't own, they they owned it usually by themselves because if they owned it with somebody else, and that person could typically go ahead and sell it. So, they're usually an individual who passed away, and now somebody wants to sell the property. Okay, but the person who owns it is deceased. So we need evidence that there's somebody with authority on behalf of the estate to sell the property, and that's where the whole probate process comes in. Probate does much more than just that, but from a title perspective, that's what we care about because it appoints somebody called a personal representative who then can act on behalf of the estate to sell the property. Okay. And that's what that does. Now, there are ways around it. If, uh, if somebody is looking to say, boy, you know, I really, that does not sound like it would be pleasant, or I don't want my heirs to have to deal with something like that, how can I... Um, clean that up or prepare for it so then we don't have to go through that process. And to me, there are, I think, I guess there are three ways to do that. The easiest way is to, um, you can just add somebody else into title, I suppose, you know, and have them be joint tenants. So if you have, a, if you have just, say, one daughter or son, you know, you could just quit claim them and add them as a joint tenant. And then if you passed away, the property just goes right to them. That would be one way. But, you know, then that person is entitled. Maybe they don't want to be, you know, it just, it, it, right. it, you know, it adds a couple of layers to it. Um, the other way is called a transfer on death deed, and this is becoming more and more common um, because what it does is you file this deed with the county, and you're essentially saying that upon the death of me, the grantor, the property shall vest in the grantees listed on the transfer on death deed. The transfer doesn't is not effective until the grantor passes away, but you record it right away. So then everybody's on notice that these people who are listed as grantees in the deed will be the owners upon the death of the grantor. You avoid probate altogether that way, which is good, and it's cost-effective and saves time as well. And it probably takes some of the stress off of all of the parties in the family about having right. to worry about something like that. So, that's, like, that's right now, I'm too. married. My, if I were to pass away, my wife, if you, um, you know, we're, we're joint tenants. If you're joint tenants, then, yeah. Even, yep. you know, we're a two-member LLC in sure. the real estate we own. Yep. So she would get the property so yep. we don't have to worry about it. No. But in the unlikely event, you know, we would die in a... Simultaneously, simultaneously or something, right, yeah. Then we're looking at probate. You would be, right. And so one way around probate is, again, just if you, you could add people in by quit claim deed. Not ideal, but it's, right. it, it serves the joint tenancy purpose. The transfer on death deed is option two, and that's pretty common now because it's a pretty good way to, to kind of clean up your estate and not have to worry about it after the fact. And then the third option is putting the property in a trust, which essentially takes it out of your name individually, puts it in the name of a trust. You can kind of create the name of the trust however you want it to be, the Chris George Revocable Trust dated January 21st, 2020. And then I name some trustees. Uh, could be me, could be my wife, could be anybody that I trust to administer the trust. And then when I pass away, uh, the trust still exists, and you would have some successor trustees or even your original trustees can then go ahead and administer the property, sell it, do whatever they want to do, keep it. But it's in the trust, so we're fine. We don't need probate. And the trust exists in perpetuity until you shut it down. Basically. Ideally, I mean, yeah, it goes on for a long time and certainly long and enough. They run to, it out of money. You know, yeah, right. I mean, and so you can just you can keep it there, and and uh, and then whenever the trustees are willing to sell it, there are beneficiaries of the trust that you would name as well, and they're usually the ones entitled to the proceeds from the sale or any ancillary income as a result of the uh, administration of the trust. But yeah, that's those are the those would be the three ways that one could. Um, circumvent the probate process. Awesome. So if someone wants to really deep dive in this topic or has a specific situation, sure. how do they get a hold of you? Sure, they more? can call me. My number is 651-338-6632, or they could also email. My number or my email address is cgeorge at attorneystitlemn.com. Awesome. Thanks, Chris. This you has betcha. been really helpful. You're welcome. Uh, I'm Scott Picard with Verde Real Estate Group. As always, if you want to get a hold of us, the number is 612 600 612-600-8888. Call or text or 24-7 online at verde-realestate.com. We hope this content has been valuable. And like always, if we can be a further service, please let us know. Thank you.